Hey everyone, Fez here from Crypto Setups. Today I'm going to take you through an excellent privacy wallet called Railway. Now as always, these videos aren't financial advice. They're strictly for educational purposes only. Railway is the privacy wallet built off the Railgun infrastructure. Let me give you a quick overview about Railgun. Basically, Railgun smart contracts add privacy to crypto transactions. Railgun is a privacy system built with ZK Snark technology. In case you're wondering, ZK Snark is a type of proof, a zero knowledge proof. That is why the ZK stands for zero knowledge. A zero knowledge proof makes it possible for both sides of the transaction to show each other that they have the exact same information without revealing the information itself. I know. Simply put, it makes your transactions private on the blockchain. That's what it's about. Railgun is wallet infrastructure that enables privacy on layer one blockchains. Railway is the privacy wallet built off the Railgun infrastructure. Railway is currently deployed on Ethereum, Polygon, and Binance Smart Chain. The Railway wallet allows you to move assets from a public address to a private address and in that private address, you can interact with currently a swap function that pulls liquidity from the layer one chains itself via a zero X integration. Basically, it doesn't need its own liquidity in the private wallet space, in the shielded wallet space. It is integrated to zero X, which is uh, tapped into Uniswap and uh, many existing layer one AMMs that exist to give you the best price and swaps. And you can do this all privately. And this is just one integration the wallet has with many more coming to it. Finally, what's awesome about the Privacy Railway wallet, it is built for Windows, Mac, M1 support for the Macs, Google, Apple, and Linux. So you can literally download the app and use it and it also has a web-based version. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use the Railway app. Now, I'm gonna take you through how to set up a wallet, and how to shield your assets, how to use a swap function, basically everything about the wallet. So, Railway, as you can see, DeFi privacy wallet powered by Railgun. So, I'm gonna launch the web app. And here you go, this is the interface. And as you can see, it's not an extension because it's not connected to MetaMask or anything like that. It's its own wallet. So over here, uh, the first thing you need to do is you need to decide, do you want to import one of your existing wallets, like your existing MetaMask wallet? You can use that seed phrase and bring it into this wallet, or you can create a new wallet via Railway itself. So for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm gonna create a new wallet very quickly and then show you some of the navigation aspects and then I will load one of my other wallets into it and um, show you how to uh, shield your assets and all the different things you can do with the wallet. Let, let's go into it. So I'm gonna create a new wallet um, quickly. You can see right off the bat, if you wanna create a new wallet, each it's, it's the same address will be tied to these three chains and um, uh, there's an activity tab based on transactions, swap functionality. But first let's create this wallet. I'm going to create a new wallet on uh, Binance Smart Chain. So the first thing it asks you to do is um, make it a bit bigger. No, that's not what it asks you to do. The first thing it wants you to do is create a password. Now, one thing to remember is uh, this password is what will uh, basically uh, let you process transactions. So uh, you need to remember it. Don't forget it. Now you need to name your wallet. Okay, so I'm going to name it tutorial. And submit. Cool, so again, for the purpose of this tutorial, as soon as I'm done with this wallet, I'm gonna restore another wallet and this will seed phrase and stuff will be invalid. But as you know, your seed phrase, this is what you need in, uh, because this is a web-based wallet, if you clear your cache or anything like that, you will need your seed phrase to restore the wallet via the web application. So make sure you store this not on your cloud servers and things like that. The same standard rules for any wallet applies for this. So click here to show. I'm gonna copy it. And I'm going to save that as I do. 
Now, I tend to, this is a great example. So this is my, uh, and I'm gonna go through in more detail. This is my private address. So this is, and you can tell that because it's got the zero ZK. If the public address for my wallet here is zero X. So if I'm moving assets from other wallets, like exchange wallets for Binance Smart Chain or anything like that, I would always give my public address, not the private address. So uh, just make sure you know that. Now I'm gonna just copy these and uh, keep it in my document just in case, because as I said, if my cache resets, you know, I may lose the information. I like to have a copy of it. So I've copied that and I'm gonna hit finish. Great. Now I have the wallet and it's all set up. You can see it's got the tutorial name. So quick navigation still, now that I have this wallet set up, I can literally same wallet change networks as it were with the MetaMask addresses as well. Same thing. Um, sometimes it does take a little bit because it needs to sync. So give it a moment. Cool. Then, as I said, with the activity uh, field, if I were to do any transactions and the swap function, if you remember earlier, I said you can swap and I'll go through this in more detail. The other aspect is over here. If you click on the name, you can then uh, see the wallet you have created. You can go in and you can add new wallet. And if you wanted to, you could import, you could view only or create another new wallet if that's what you please to choose to do. Over here, you can see at the moment, it's saying it's private. This is very important because remember just moments ago, I spoke about your zero ZK. So as soon as it sets it up, it's set it up in private mode. Now, if I click that, it changes it to public and it gives me my public address. Now, if, if you've created a new wallet, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is move funds to your public address of the railway wallet, and then you can start shielding it. So. I'm gonna quickly restore a wallet that has funds and then we'll play around with how you shield assets and then redeem them. Okay, so here I have imported one of my existing wallets that I use for tutorials, Crypto Setups Wallet. And as you can see, it's in the private um, section. So I want to look at the public and here you go. So uh, it's showing you what I have in that, which is BNB and um, some other assets, but the coins aren't listed. So I'll show you how to list pull the coin in so it's as normal you hit the plus button and if the coin isn't in the list you can custom token or actually search for it i know there's usdc so i'm going to pick that and add and here we go there was a done button and where my face is so it's now got the coin so this is in what is in my public address now from here, I would like to shield. Now with anything in the public address, if you're sending to another address or you want to shield, it's going to take the transaction in the native chain. So if you're on um, Polygon or Ethereum, it'll be uh, Matic token, Polygon token or Ethereum in fees. But when you have shielded it, then there are fees when you want to move or unshield, but that can be charged in whatever token you have in there. So, um, which is good. That way you don't have to worry about, you know, also having uh, the native asset in that, in the shielded address. The second thing is when you're moving the native tokens like BNB or Ethereum, it will wrap it and give you a wrapped version in the shielded section. As you can see over here, it's wrapped BNB. Uh, same for Ethereum, same for Polygon. So just Take note of that. And the same thing happens when you then go from the private to public and you move it into the public address, it will then unwrap, give you the option to give you back a wrapped version or have it unwrapped when it arrives in your public address. Again, things that I went looking for answers uh, before I tried the system out, so I'm, I'm letting you know. Cool, so how do we uh, shield some tokens? I'm gonna, I'm gonna shield the uh, 25, dollars in USDC, okay? So what we do is click on, click on the coin and I want to shield it. So click on shield, it's super simple. And this is the address. Now, one thing I've noticed, unless you change this address, it is giving you your current shielded address. 
Uh, it may look a little bit different uh, if you go and look at your shielded address versus this, but it is sending it to you unless you change this address to something else. Uh, so there's that. Now I'm going to hit max. You've got to approve it. it. Requires a password. Cool. And now I am going to send through $24.98. There is, when you're shielding and unshielding, a 0.25% fee that is charged for that. And then I'll explain the other part when I'm in the shielded zone. So let's hit confirm next. And you can see over here, this is, this is the network fee as part of the transaction. So I will hit shield. Done. It succeeded. Now let's take a look what's happened here. I've clicked on private. Give it a little bit. See, you can see that it's shielded and it's gone through. So let's take a look now. So this happened to me the first time I use, used it. I noticed, uh, I went asking for help. So one thing, you see over here how this is still updating. This needs to get to 100% and then it will show you shielded. Usually it is a matter of 30, 40 seconds. Sometimes if the Binance Smart Chain is having RPC issues, which it has been for the last two, three days, even though it's cleared up recently, this is very slow to load. So do not panic. Your funds aren't lost. Let's Let me take a look at how long it takes to come back. So I was having a little bit of browser issues, but as you can see here, I bought the same wallet back and everything's working fine. And you can see from the activity, shielded, it's synced. And if I click on the private address now, I have $24.90. Now, this is as, as I stated in the ZK Snark tech, and that you can tell by the zero ZK instead of the zero XB. Um, now from here, once you're in the private section, you have options, which is you can swap. Remember I talked about, you can, it's got a built-in DEX, but it's not a DEX where you supply liquidity or anything like that. This DEX literally connects to some of the biggest DEXs on it. In this case, it would be Binance Smart Chain um, and uh, enable swaps privately so you can, move in USDC, then I could swap it for uh, BUSD and then um, from there, remove the BUSD to a public address or a brand new wallet if I choose. So I'm not gonna swap, it's, it's as simple as review order and then confirm by appro after approving the transaction. The next thing is, okay, so you've got it in the private section. One of the key things to remember is the longer you leave it in the private wallet or you move it around different places or just leave it in the wallet and then remove it, uh, the, the harder it is to trace. In general, it's not traceable because it doesn't show it on any trackers. But obviously, if you put in $25 and then remove $25 two minutes later in a new wallet, someone could piece that together if you're trying to, you know, hide your where your transactions are going. But as always, there's many different use cases for this. So over here, we've now got the shielded. So now let's unshield it. This is the big one, okay? So this is where we want to take it from a private address to a public address. So the first thing you need to do is uh, click on the coin. And if you have multiple, you can un unshield multiple in one go. In this case, I just have the 2490. One, one thing to keep in mind, when you're unshielding, there, there is a relay involved. It is... Um, it, there's a fee, a relay fee involved. So if you're doing something like $5, it's not going to work because usually the fees are around $5 for the relay. So you may want to think about doing a decent amount. Um, for this tutorial, I'm just showing you so uh, how it works. And you can see it's got it. So I want to unshield this amount. Or in, in this case, if I wanted to just send it in the shielded address, I could. But let's click unshield. And uh, I believe this is my... Uh, wallet address. Let me just check a 60 B. Yep. So I'm going to unshield to the same address. 
Why? Because if I wanted to unshield to a different wallet address, a public wallet, all I do is copy and paste the address here and then um, send it through to there. So uh, I'm going to send unshield $10. Okay. So confirm amount. Here's the next option. You can see if I want to add another token. So if I added another, then I could put BUSD or if I had DAI or anything like that. Sometimes if you're wanting to unshield, it's good to do it in a, in a few of them in one batch. That way you pay that one relay fee rather than every, every time doing it separately. So let's hit next. Let's ask them for my password. Now here's that bit I talked about regarding the relay fee. You can see it's taking a small, so the relay fee is separate to the 0.25% fee. You charge users the prior shielding and unshielding. And as I said, $5.62. So this is where, I mean, like for this, it doesn't seem worth it, but um, uh, you click generate proof. Proof has been generated. And now it's given you uh, hundred and a few 150 seconds you just click the unshield button again oh my face is covering it again but I'll give it a moment you can see the activity nine dollars left if I click on this you can see my nine dollars um, 98 has come out okay so um, quite simply, this is how the railway wallet works. And uh, you've seen how you can shield and unshield. Now, if uh, a couple of things to remember is I've shown you this aspect of adding wallets in, if for, for example, the issue happened that you just witnessed the RPC, it can take some time if Binance RPCs are having some issues. But if for whatever reason, the wallet uh, the information doesn't appear in the private um, area, you can go into settings and click on rescan private balances and it will just reload all the information and, and the wallet should load up. Like I said, after the first time I had the issue, I since have not had issues with it. It's loaded instantly. And I've only found this syncing issue uh, on Binance Smart Chain when I instantly switch to the other chains, it loads all the information quick. So you, uh, I'll push it to Ethereum. And you can see on Ethereum, this updating, and by the time I'm done talking, it should be done. But I'm looking forward to further integrations on, on this. I hope this tutorial has shown you what Railgun is, how you can use the Railway Wallet, and as always, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, everyone.